Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriverSuccess.com. Today I want to go over running a Kanban agreement versus a blanket order agreement as a manufacturer. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to go over this today is because there's a lot of companies out there, they, they mix uh, a Kanban and blanket order agreement together. You know, they're running a Kanban agreement um, when they're really running a blanket order agreement, and they're running a blanket order agreement when they're really running a Kanban agreement. So I want to basically clear the air, and I want to go over, you know, where are these markets most likely to see these type of agreements, okay? So what kind of market do you run these supply agreements in? Um, what is the process that's involved in running this type of agreement? Um, and what are the costs in terms of liabilities both for you and for your customer, okay? And then I'm going to sum it up by going over a build-to-order platform or a demand-driven type of, of supply agreement. And this was something that I covered for the Institute of Supply Chain Management in um, October 2011 in their monthly publication, Inside Supply Management, where I contributed to an article on Dell's push-pull. So I'm going to go over what, what I covered in that article and what I've included on the website at driversuccess.com about Dell, uh, and then maybe that's something that you can use. Okay, so right off the bat, we're going to start off with, with talking about the Kanban agreement. Now, a Kanban agreement isn't just an agreement. It's, it's an idea behind, um, or better yet, it's, it's a manufacturing philosophy. And in this case, Kanban relates to Kaizen and just-in-time and these type of, 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 of basically um, manufacturing philosophies where you're shipping product on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis, okay? So right off the bat, when it comes to a Kanban, you're going to see this in the market where there is constant and linear demand for products, okay? And when you think about constant and linear demand for products, think about uh, automotive manufacturers. they got five models of cars. They make millions of those models. They have a fixed bill of materials and they do not deviate from that fixed bill of materials and they're constantly pushing their suppliers to bring product in on a daily and weekly basis and in some cases hourly, okay? So it's, it's for a constant and linear demand market. It's a continuous feedback loop and in this I mean that, you know, from the time that you cut material to the time that you use CNC machining, drilling and tapping, uh, you know, labeling, soldering, um, shipping, you constantly have to replenish each area of your value chain on the production floor with raw material, semi-finished, work in process, finished inventory, and it's got to be done daily, okay? So a Kanban agreement is a very serious agreement in the sense that, you know, your supplier, your, your customer is not just signing up to buying a product. They're, they're basically agreeing to support uh, labor and material and, and, and machinery that's solely allocated to making the Kanban agreement work because it's something that has to continually happen every single day, okay? So that leads into the third point. There are high costs and liabilities both for you and for your customer when it comes to a Kanban agreement. And that's why the contracts are so large, okay? So in essence, what you're covering is you're covering raw materials, semi-finished inventory, and finished inventory, okay? So there are three essential aspects of running a Kanban agreement that are very expensive. Now, how does this compare to running a blanket order? You're going to see a blanket order agreement in a market with cyclical and infrequent demand, okay? So in this case, you're going to have a situation where you know, companies have infrequent business cycles. They've got, you know, one month busier than the next, one quarter is busier than the previous quarter. So it's ideally suited to that type of market because the liabilities are low. You, you box product and you ship it. That leads us to the stop and go process of what a blanket order is. Now, most blanket orders, what happens is and it, a company will manufacture a product. Let's say they manufacture five. It took them six weeks to get those five units finished. They box the five and they wait for their customer to call because the customer is operating in a cyclical market. Calls up and says, I need those five products. Those five products are shipped out to the customer. Customer receives the five. And now you've got this big question mark relating to lead time. Okay? And that's the problem with the blanket order. Okay? Is lead time for, for stock replenishment. Okay? So what is your lead time to replenish the stock that you just shipped out to your customer? If you've got nothing in process, you've got no way to replenish that inventory shorter than your standard lead time of six weeks. Okay? The costs only extend to finished goods, and that's a benefit. In this case, you know, your customer and you are only concerned, and you, your company, is only concerned with the cost of the finished goods. Okay? So you don't have a, a large amount of inventory for, uh, for anything else other than finished goods, um, and in that case, it's a benefit. Now, the problem with the blanket order, again, is the lead time. You have no way to replenish the finished inventory count. The problem with the Kanban agreement is it's just, it's, it's too much to absorb both for your customer and for you. 
So what we're going to go over today is something that I did for, for, again, that I did for the Institute of Supply Chain Management. We're going to talk about what's called a demand-driven driven supply agreement, okay? Or build-to-order, let's call it. Build-to-order supply agreement. Very simply, what we're going to do is you're going to basically pre-manufacture the majority of your assembly, okay? So you're going to, you're going to pre-manufacture the majority of your assembly, okay? Let's say uh, this is your semi-finished inventory. Okay? You're also going to have finished inventory. You're going to have finished inventory boxed and waiting to ship to your customer. Okay? So, in your finished inventory, let's say that you've got four boxes that are boxed with 10 units of each finished good. Okay, so you've got four boxes, 10 units in each box. Your semi-finished inventory, in order to replenish the finished inventory, must allow you to be able to replenish that within a minimum amount of lead time. Okay, so in this case, you would have 10, 10, 10, and 10. Now, pre-manufacturing is something that you can do um, that relates a lot to how Dell runs their supply chain. Now, Dell does something version of, of a can Kanban. Constant product coming in continuous time and time again, okay? Um, however, pre-manufacturing, if you, you pre-manufacture, let's say, 70% of your assembly, and you only have 30% to turn that semi-finished inventory into finished inventory, then you've shortened your product to market lead time. You've shortened the time it takes to replenish this inventory. Okay. Now, in this case, it's not as serious as the Kanban agreement because you don't have a whole whack of raw materials coming in behind that your customer has to agree to in terms of liability. And you can determine how many semi-finished inventory products that you have that are in a pre-manufactured state waiting to replenish the finished inventory. However, you know, the liability is a little bit more than blanket order and less than Kanban, but what it allows you to do is it allows you to basically pre-manufacture 70% of your assembly and finish off the remaining 30% to turn it into a finished inventory good within a period of a week or two. Otherwise, let's say to do this whole thing, we go back to our six week lead time. That's simply too long for your customer to absorb in a blanket order. So that's it, Kanban versus a blanket order. Uh, Kanban is linear and constant, continuous process, high liabilities. Blanket order is cyclical and frequent, stop and go process. Costs only extend to the finished goods, but the problem is the lead time. And when you have that problem, look at running this type of agreement where you've got products in a semi-finished state, completed at 70%, waiting to replenish the finished inventory count. This is a demand-driven, build-to-order platform. So that's it. Ian Johnson, DriverSuccess.com. Bye-bye.